Hey everybody, welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Friday, January 24th, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Andy Lefkowitz. Welcome, Andy. Hey it's man, how's it going? I know, you, right? <laughs> and we are here with Caitlin Coffee, please, Moynihan, <laughs> over well, there. Well, look at that shirt. Look at that well, shirt. Is yeah. it, we're always going to be commenting on what Maybe. I'm wearing? Okay, well, yeah, yeah. Hello, if I, everybody. If I've got hosting duties, we certainly <laughs> are. Uh, welcome, everybody. We have a wonderful guest with us yes, today. Guys. We have Alex Boniello here from Dear Evan Hansen. Yes. Broadway. It's very exciting. He came here fresh from Broadway Con. We're going to ask him about that and Dear Evan Hansen and so much more. Uh, but first, let's talk about today's top five. We're going to run and tell all this news. What, what? Yeah. You got what I did? Yes. You, get it? <laughs> you guys, Hairspray is going back out on tour. Yes. Yay. Very and exciting. Not just Hairspray, but Hairspray featuring the original Broadway creative team. Jerry Mitchell is doing his amazing choreography yep. again. Jack O'Brien is directing it again. Um, and what's cool is it's, that it's going to launch in Baltimore. Yes, I mean, the, right, that makes at sense. At the Hippodrome yes. Theater uh, <laughs> beginning on November 10. Uh, cool. This is super exciting. We don't know who's in it yet, but I'm sure it'll be an amazing cast. Um, yeah, Very exciting. Yeah. Best Musical 2002. You should know. Okay. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yes. that sounds right. Okay. And I think they're three, planning to go three, 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 2003. Three, sounds three, right. My bad. Yes. Wow. And I think they're planning to go to over like 60 cities. Two is cities. Millie, by the way. Uh, Two is the year no, there no. with. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. Gotta you feel redeem better. yourself. Right. So much better. Thank <laughs> Very excited to see Hairspray back on the road, though. Perfect show. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, this Tony nominee has yet another gig. We are talking about Will Swenson, of course, who will return to Off-Broadway later this year. He's going to be in, in Assassins, uh, which is really exciting. But he recently headlined an industry reading of a new musical, which is based on the life and music of Grammy-winning hitmaker Neil Diamond. Mm. The industry reading was directed by Michael Mayer, which is really exciting. And it features a book by current Two Popes Oscar nominee Anthony McCartan. Uh, you, of course, know Will Swenson. Uh, he's a Tony nominee for the Tony-winning revival of Hair. But he's also been in Waitress, Disaster, Les Mis, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, 110 in the Shade, Lestat, and Brooklyn. Um, we don't really know much more about this Neil Diamond musical. That's kind of all the deets we have. The industry reading happened. It went really well. Will Swenson is super talented, as is Michael Mayer. So this will probably have a life going yeah, forward. So. And also bio musicals are all the rage yes, right now. Guys. So, and Neil Diamond has quite a lot, many fans the canon i used of, to listen yeah. to neil diamond with my parents growing up because they oh, love yeah. neil diamond absolutely and i love will swenson so i'm crossing everything this would this be very cool days. so we'll see well and we'll keep you updated as we know more it's 2020 and we're still talking about cats and i love it <laughs> We're always going to yes, be talking guys, about Guys, so we found out that Donna Vivino is going to take over as Grizabella on the national tour of Cats. Yes. Um, Donna Vivino, Vivino is super talented. She's crazy talented. She's an alphabet. Amazing voice. Yeah. Former Alphaba. Um, young Cassette. And, yeah, yeah. The original Young Cassette. Yeah. The original Les Mis, guys. Yeah. This amazing. is legit. Yeah. And she has the most gorgeous voice she on really Earth. She really does. Yeah. Um, so excited about this. We also found out that Adam Richardson, Zachary S. Berg, Berger, PJ De Gaetano, uh, Mickey Maddox, and Timothy Gulen are joining the Cats tour. So definitely check this out in your city. Uh, yeah, seeing Donna Vivino perform memory it should be on your yes, life top list. Of yes. your list. <laughs> so make sure you do what you can to go see that. Yes. Yes. And it's been a very hairspray kind of day. That's right. So we already knew that Hairspray was being remounted in the West End, and now we found out uh, some more members of the cast. Paul Merton, Rita Simons, and Johnny Amies will be joining the cast as Wilbur Turnblad, Velma Von Tussel, and Link Larkin, respectively. Um, just like the tour that we were talking about, this uh, West End remounting of Hairspray will also be feature the original direction of Jack O'Brien and the choreography of Jerry Mitchell. Um, if you don't know uh, the people that we've mentioned, here's why you might know them. Merton is a legendary UK comedy star uh, known for BBC's Have I Got News For You, but this will mark his West End debut. Uh, Simons is known for her turn in the show East Enders, which is a huge hit across the pond, but she's also been on stage in Legally Blonde in Dream Team. And Amy's first 
collaborated with uh, Jerry Mitchell um, on the jukebox musical My Own British Invasion, which happened at Paper Mill Playhouse. Uh, they joined the previously announced Michael Ball, who won an Olivier for playing Edna Turnblad, uh, Lizzie Bia as Tracy Turnblad, and Marisha Wallace as Motormouth Mabel. Previews begin April 23rd. It officially opens April 29th at London at the London Coliseum. Mm-hmm. So Hairspray, no matter where you are in the world, you can probably go see some Hairspray. Learn that is, choreo, guy. Yes. The best workout in the Absolutely. entire world. You Absolutely. have experience doing right. it. I wish. Maybe yeah. in front of my mirror, but that's it. That's it. Yes, and this West End staple has announced its final performance. Yeah, so we found out today that after four years, the comedy about a bank robbery, which has been a big mm. hit in London's West End, yes. will play its final performance at the Criterion Theatre on May 3rd. Uh, this production opened on April 21st, 2016, and it will have played more than 2,000 performances in London and on tour by the time it closes. Wow. Now, this, as we all know, was created by Mischief Theatre, which right. created the play that goes wrong, which, yep. which was a Broadway hit, here, and now is... It's yeah. touring, it's off-Broadway off at New World yeah. Stages. Um, they have an incredible sense of humor. And uh, so if you're in London, you have until May 3rd to check this out. Very cool. Uh, there are a couple of other great things that you can read about on the site right now. Last night, Grand Horizons opened on Broadway, and we have complete coverage of that opening event. Also, we have video of Jordan Fisher, who's talking about going into Dear Evan Hansen. And we have an exit interview with Andrew Barth Feldman, who is leaving Dear Evan Hansen. So you can watch both of those things. You get a little sad, but then perk yourself right back up knowing about <laughs> Jordan Fisher. We also have a first look at 72 Miles to Go, which is a new play off Broadway as right. well. There so lots of cool stuff, but don't go look at all of that yet. Just keep that in your back pocket because first we're going to talk about Alex Boniello. Andy, thank you so much. You have a too. wonderful have a weekend. weekend. Thank you so much. Caitlin, would you please introduce our guest? Gladly. Yes, you guys, we got Alex Boniello here with us in the studio today because it's a really sad time because oh. he's going into his final weekend as Connor Murphy and dear Evan Hansen. He's the only second person to play the role as he took over for original cast member Tony nominee Mike Feist. You guys may have previously seen Alex on Broadway when he was in Deaf West Spring Awakening. You guys can follow him on social media at Alex Boniello. Leave all of your questions in the comments down below. And please welcome Alex and Ryan. Hello, Alex. Yay. Hi. Welcome to Live. Hi, everybody. Live. It's How so you great doing? to have you here. Thanks Thank for you. coming by. We know that this is kind of a turbulent moment in your sure. life right yeah, now. Sure. You know? That's, sure. uh, first of all, you were just at Broadway Con. I was at Broadway Con. Doing I did some a, signing. Yeah, I did a, an hour-long uh, autograph signing, which I thought was going to be... Uh, I don't know. I thought it was going to be like, for some reason, like more stressful or difficult than it was. It was okay. really chill. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Broadway. <laughs> yeah, Broadway people. It was pretty. Yeah. It was pretty chill. Uh, I also was like, oh god, I hope people show up. And then I like round the corner, and there were like. Like many people, and I was like, <laughs> "Of course oh my there God. were." And then I was Fame. like, "There's simply no way they all have <laughs> here. have heard of me." Like I, I thought like surely, but no, everybody. Yeah, yeah when you're in a nice. when you're giving a fantastic performance and a huge hit on Broadway, sure. yes, a lot of people sure. are gonna want. Um, this, was this your first time at Broadway? No, you've been before. no. I think I've uh, done. I, I may have missed one of them, okay. but I, I recall doing the the first Broadway con. I the, when we were doing Spring Awakening, it was one of the first. Right, that's absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, right. it was one of the first panels of the whole I believe you're thing. Right. So it was very yeah. like, uh, get out there. We were, yeah, we were really figuring it out. <laughs> yeah. So it was really kind of unbelievable to see how. Uh, I was talking to a lovely person on the staff who's worked all of them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's pretty unbelievable to see how far. Um, it has come because it, it's really like a pretty well oiled machine now. It is. And also, it's yeah. like changed venues and, and stuff like that. Right. Um, I think I think where they're at now at the Hilton, where they started, is probably the the best fit for I it. Think I think you're right. Because yeah. the Javits Center was so like cavernous. It's, it that is. That place is yes. big. Yeah. No, um, it's huge. It's very is, intimidating. Yes. Yeah. No, yes. this is a bit more intimate. And you're going back, right? I believe. Are you. I actually don't. I think I am. I think that no, I think it was a one and done. Well, I hope you were there, folks. I hope, hope you hope you made it. Because I got I got stuff to do this weekend. <laughs> That's right. You're very busy. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Dear Evan Hansen yeah. a little bit. Um, how does it feel? Well, let's take me back to the beginning. When you first we, we did an exit interview with Andrew Breath Feldman, who answered some of these great questions, yeah. and I want to pose them to you as well. Okay. Um, when you first got the job, when you found out you were gonna be playing Connor Murphy, yeah. What was the reaction? What did you think? Um, it was honestly incredible relief mm. because I um I really I was just at a spot in my life where I like really kind of needed it mm. to kind of to put wind back in my sails but also like just financially and, and yeah. like it was really a time and I I really was like if if I don't 
if I'm not the guy for this, I don't uh, know who I am as a right. performer, kind of. So I really um, was hoping it was going to work out. And, um, you know, as, as time has passed, I've learned from, like, the team and stuff like that uh, that I've spoken to that, like, when my name was brought up, they were like, yeah, I mean, it's going to be Alex, right? And, like, all I had to do was go in the room and not, like, just make a mockery of... It. Yeah, just, just, like, just, like, make a mockery of the material. Um, so, yeah, Sounds and... Yes, and it was, um, you know, it was new for me, too, because the last time I was on Broadway, um, it was very much a, the, in the process of creating something. Right, Because, yeah. you know, Spring Awakening was such, yeah. like, a total reinvention of the show. So I didn't really know what replacing was going to be like, and, and it turned into, um, you know, I was one of the first replacements period so it was right. also when you're turning a show into a multi-production mega hit there's a lot that the creative team kind of figures out along the way absolutely and i was very much one of the uh actors who experienced that of like all right when we set things on alex now this is what we're gonna set yeah. for like the the london production and for the national tour and stuff like that so uh, <laughs> no you can do nothing for me siri <laughs> you can do nothing <laughs> Uh, Calm down, Siri. You'll get your yeah. soon. Um, <laughs> anyway, so th we were learning things. Th they were learning things like that, and yeah, um, that's so a really interesting point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what when you what's something in uh, in the time that you've been playing Connor? What's something either you've learned about yourself as an actor, or something that playing Connor has taught you um, about Alex? What's just sure. what, what's a revelation you've had since playing this role? Um, I think, you know, I. I I, I think just as me as a human being, I've learned how to be, uh, how to do this more healthily mm. because I've had to do it for, so it's been like two years since I've been doing this. Um, it's, so I've, I've, I've kind of learned how to like build healthier habits because, you know, Spring Awakening was a, um, it was a limited run and I was younger. So I was kind of just like flying by on like, you know, adrenaline and, yeah. and like yeah. youth. <laughs> and, uh, you know, now that I say this as if I'm, like, right, 70, I but I, I, sometimes I feel like it. Um, but, but you know, so I learned a lot more about how to, like, make this healthy and sustainable. And, sense, yeah. like, and that involved, like, going, like, I meditate twice a day every day, like, knowing when to eat and what to eat, going to the gym every day. Like, the, just the maintenance of what this job is that mm -hmm. people don't spend enough time talking about because it's, you know, your life sort of kind of becomes keeping yourself together and keeping yeah. keep because when your body's your instrument you kind of have to for sure you got to tune it for sure you know every yeah. day absolutely were you a big were you a big broadway fan um before you started performing were yeah you? i mean no uh not especially it just cuz it wasn't it wasn't really on my like radar i was in bands and stuff like that mm -hmm. um and so it wasn't until uh, it was the original production of Spring Awakening that I saw with like the drama club at school okay. that really kind of like freaked me out and was like, oh, dude, like that's yeah. a thing that we can we can do. Um, and that's kind of when it happened. And it happened like all at once and very yeah. swiftly and powerfully. And then know. to be able to make your Broadway debut. It's in messed up. Like, yeah, it's crazy. messed up. It's <laughs> because that was the role, too, that I was oh, like, really? I was like, well, that's the one. That um, you, yeah, you know. it was really it was really. Uh, I, I, I talk to people about it all the time. Like. I recognized how ridiculous it was as it was happening, <laughs> right. but it's not until you're a little bit older and you've got some time away from the situation to be like, whoa, that's yeah. not, it's just, it was, it's really special. Right. And, and today, today is the four year anniversary of that show closing, actually. It is. It yeah. is. Apparently yeah. I just leave Broadway shows <laughs> this week. Uh, now's this, when I do this it. This is the week that, no. the, yeah. Somebody, I saw people joking to me on Twitter. They're like, if you need to know when Alex Bonio is leaving a play, just, it's the weekend of Broadway Con. <laughs> so just like know that that's going down. We want something to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. No, it's well planned. Um, what has been the easiest part of this job for you? Easiest part? Um, the show's really good. Um, it is you know, crazy, and, yeah. and, you know, whether we, whether, you know, no matter what your opinions on the like subject matter of the show or how it makes you feel or what your experience was it with it is the again after doing this thing just under 700 times i can like tell you that the book of wow. this thing is airtight mm -hmm. it is so so good and um we've been we've i've everybody who's ever been in it are so lucky to have something as good good as it because even yeah. if you're like oh my god like today is just not a day where i feel like i can like get up there 
the characters are so human that like you can really meet it anywhere. It's not, you know, it's it's just been easy to do it, to yeah. do it and show up and do it because it's it's so good. Mm -hmm. Like every like every um, every comma, every period, like, yes, that's the goal for writers, but right. like Steven Levinson really it's it's all there. Like yeah. everything that Evan says, all those like you know, sometimes people will say to an Evan, like, how do you do all that, like, stammering and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I swear to you, if you open the page of this script, it's yeah. all in there. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's really good. That's my, it's It makes sense why Stephen Levinson is, everybody wants Stephen Levinson to write their thing now. Like, yeah. he's one of the most in demand. It's, it's, it's all right there. He, yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> and on the, the other side of that same coin, what has been uh, the hardest yeah. part of this job for you? Um, I think... Uh, I think obviously just doing eight eight shows a week is hard. Everybody everybody says it. It's just hard to do it. Um, I think kind of being in the uh, being in the like the emotional headspace of a person like Connor for as long as I have been is it just it, it starts to get like there really are days where you like walk down to start the show and you're like I like genuinely don't have anything in the tank to like yeah. scream at someone right now. Mm -hmm. But you again going back to the show's good, so it it will happen if you just kind of trust right. it. But um, It'll be nice to um, it'll it'll be nice to not have to like be the prince of darkness for a little I while. Imagine. You know what I mean? Yeah, be nice to tap out of that. For yeah, a little bit. and yeah. and like I found that like you know I'm I'm a person who keeps to himself a lot too, but I found that like the more like fun I have with people backstage mm -hmm. in between scenes, like the less effective I am at my job too. Yeah. So like yeah. a lot of times I'm like, if I have like too much fun, I'll be like, all right, you can go back to your dressing room and just like sit alone for a minute, be mm -hmm. and which is like. No one wants to be that guy, but like <laughs> it just it just helps you do the job. Yeah, no, so I, I look forward to uh, rediscovering the the less broody part of myself because um, when you're when you're good at uh, when you're good at playing those kind of parts, it turns out you play them a lot. Mm -hmm. And I uh, <laughs> I I've just I've spent a lot of time with people like this, and I'd like to spend time with someone. Right, not like this. No, that makes sense. I get, yeah. yeah. Is there something the the fans of Dear Evan Hansen are uh, they're a legend in and of themselves? Mm -hmm. um, what is something either you've uh, learned from a fan of the show or learned about um, fandom? Period through the experiences you've had with. I mean, because these are these are. Because of the show, the nature of the show itself, um, there's a lot of youthful engagement with mm -hmm. it. The show tries to be very engaging on social media. What's what's a lesson you've picked up um, from all of that? Young people listen uh, mm -hmm. to what you have to say, and I encourage everybody who uh, has any kind of following or any kind of like magnifying glass on them at all to think about the things you say. Yeah. Um, because I have found that like sometimes I'll like, you know, make a remark in passing. And uh, that I don't even like remember I say, and then like at the stage or someone will say like a while ago on Twitter, you said this and it really meant a lot to me. And I am like, I'll just have a moment where I'm like, oh man, like when eyes are on you, eyes are on you. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And I really try to, I really try to use my uh, platform as it were to, to talk about openly about mental health and encourage, encourage people to talk about it as well, but also to just try to not take things too seriously and try to make people laugh a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's the thing is they, they really, they really watch. And so just remember, especially if you have young people following you, how much what you say means. That's a good point. And just mm -hmm. be careful and, you know, think, think, breathe, count to five before you like tweet something. Yeah. Make sure it's worth putting into the world. <laughs> I think that's that's yeah. solid advice. Well put. Solid. Um, you speaking of the platform and speaking of you recently um, had your solo show debut yes. at Joe's Pub. At Joe's Pub, yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, tell me, and you've debuted some original music. That's right. For the first I time, did. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so I'd been, um, you know, if you followed my career for a while, you know that like this is like the first show I've ever done where yeah. I didn't have to play like 85 <laughs> instruments. Um, so I, you know, it's, it's, that was, that was what I did as an, you know, as like a creative person mm -hmm. first before uh, theater and acting and stuff like that. And I, I had this period where I was like, I really should be putting music out. But to be honest with you, I had a lot of times where I was like, what do I have to say? What, am, what do I have to contribute? Because again, like I would prefer to not speak if I don't have anything to say. Yeah. And then, and that started really, um, kind of weighing on me because you, you feel this pressure to create. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, like the things you make are bad and you start to feel not good about it. But I, um, you know, I s sort of 
started thinking about that and yeah. how that felt. And, and I was like, well, that's what I can talk about is, is what my, my experiences have been in these last few years and kind of as a person who's like entering, like officially entering like young adulthood mm -hmm. and what that, <laughs> what that means, what that looks like. Um, and yeah, so we, so we, a friend of mine, uh, Emmanuel Avis, who I grew up with, he's uh, in lots of bands in like Brooklyn, so you know he's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we, he kind of pulled the songs out of me because he was like, I know you can do this, just start doing it. And so we did, and we started finding stuff that we liked, and I was like, I should probably play these. Um, and again, I should use the eyes on me with Dear Evan Hansen to try to do a show, so we did one at Joe's Pub. And I'm telling you, if you ask anybody at the Music Box Theater for the last five months, I was stressing about this show so much because <laughs> I, I just imagine. I really wanted yeah. it to be good. Yeah. And like, you know, I didn't want it to be like, th there's nothing wrong with this, but I didn't want it to be like one of those like cabarets where you talk about your like journey. I really just wanted to like go to like Joe's Pub and like just like play a rock show, yeah. Yeah. which was a lot of fun too because like there were a lot of like Dear Evan Hansen fans, you know, in like the second row, like, and I'm playing like one of my original songs that's in like this weird time signature <laughs> uh, that's like, you know, Reminiscent of bands I grew up on, and they're just like, "What am I what listening to?" Which yeah, was very that's exact. Fantastic. It was it yeah. was fun. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was it was great. I'll be um, the first thing I'm doing, uh, quite literally, the Tuesday after I leave the show, I'll go into the studio to start working on um, recording the original songs, wow. and then I'll leave the studio and cut my hair. Fantastic. Well, okay. Well, the, yeah. That's. I mean, yeah. that's going to be a big step. This know. is, you know. Oh, I'm going to really you keep it. No, I'm not going to keep it. Maybe, maybe we'll we'll bring it to BroadwayCon next year. I'll there we go. Yeah, it auction bag. it off. Keep yeah. it in the bag. You heard it here first. And yeah. finally, before we open it up to the people that are watching, yeah. you have something exciting coming up on Valentine's Day. You're oh, gonna sure. Be doing yeah, that's Broadway right. Broadway Valentine's. Yeah, there's show. a there's a concert at 54 Below. Uh, my girlfriend April and I are, are performing in it. Um, April is a performer as well. We're yeah. both producers on Hades Town together. Absolutely. Um, so we're singing a song. Won a Tony Award. We for being we sure did. It's, it, we sure did. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, we're singing a song uh, that I guess I'm not going to tell you what it is. You don't have it's, to say. No, yeah. it's a fun. It's a fun one from a musical that I saw a lot of times off Broadway okay, when I was a freshman great. in college, and I learned what rushing a show was. Okay. All right. I was like, you, I was like, you could just show up, and it's thirty dollars. <laughs> like, right. that, you know. Yeah. No, that's a good. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Very be fun. cool. That'll Very be fun. cool. Caitlin, what yes. would our viewers like to know from Alex? Amazing. All right. So first question is, Brenda wants to know, have you approached your last month slash week slash weekend of shows any different? than before mm. or are you kind of just rolling with it that's a great question um i was having a conversation with andrew about this uh actually last night because i was checking in with him kind of to see how he was doing because it's a different experience yeah you know um i have been uh i i would say uh concerningly chill about the whole thing <laughs> um because if you think about it I don't know. I just want to do the same show that I've been doing. I'm confident in the show that I've been doing. I feel good about it. I want to just do it, and I feel like I'll allow myself to feel whatever it is that I'm going to feel when yeah. it when that when it's mm -hmm. over. Um, but you know, again, I was talking to Andrew about it. He's like, I'm feeling a lot of stuff, and I'm like, dude, that's totally normal. Also, because like it's your first time leaving something behind. Yeah, it's, right. It's, yeah, it's weird. Um, but also, this is the first time I'm I'm, you know, I've closed shows before, but like this is the first time I'm choosing to. Go mm -hmm. and see what's yep. happening, and leaving see, something leaving behind something that will behind. continue. To, that's right. Yeah. So that's that's different, and yeah. that's really interesting. Um, the the thought of closing a door so that you can open new ones is yeah. really is really interesting and re really scary. Um, so that's kind of how I'm processing it. But the actual right. shows um, should be the same show I've been doing. Right. Hopefully, if right. not, Michael Greif will certainly give me a note about it. <laughs> yeah, so. right, right. And the fact that you've already lined up going into the studio after the show is done and yeah. working on that next thing. Yeah, and that will is channeling that energy. That's that right, will, and yeah. it's something that I, whenever like the younger people leave leave the show, I would like I'm going to give you some unsolicited advice, like make a schedule for yourself, mm -hmm. like do do things to keep yourself engaged. Because after Spring Awakening, I had a really hard time yeah. with um, that because right. I didn't. I didn't have a good enough sense of what it was to be an actor and what the job actually is, mm. um, because having the long running job is the is the as hard as it is. It's the easiest part, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's you have structure, you have a place to be, you have mm. you're letting something out every day creatively. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of work to do on on yourself. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Cool. So Jacob says, as your reign as Connor, you have worked with a lot. It's a of rain. It's I a have rain. I, with an iron fist. Iron fist. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you have been able to be the Connor opposite a lot of Evan. I believe I hold the record. F- I believe this is still true that I hold the record for doing the show with the most people in history. Wow. Come okay. Wow. I believe that Look I still that. hold it. If it's not me, it's Michael Lee Brown who was our All alternate right. Evan. Yeah. You got it. And then Asa's not far behind. Asa's the Larry standby. <laughs> there it is. But Jacob just wants to know, did you did you try to make it different for Evans or like what you just said? The yeah. show's the same or like did, how did you have to vibe off each other differently? It's, so my whole job is about um, is about the Evan. Um, mm. My whole entire job mm. is, is about supporting him um, for a lot of reasons, but one of them being like I, I don't act with anybody else in the show. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. Mm. Um, and every Evan is so different that so many, so much changes. I mean, I had a friend see the show the other day um, who had seen it near the beginning of my run when I was doing it with Taylor Trench, and he said it was so fascinating to see it then and now because um, they were like, you know, you seemed this time with Andrew like you when. Do we spoil this show at this point? Are we allowed to talk? Are we allowed to talk about it? <laughs> There are a lot of a lot of my a lot of my appearances in this show uh, have a lot to do with the Evan and a lot to do with guiding him through things. Yeah, that's and well, um, yeah. and and you know it's just been noticed by people who have seen the show that like with Andrew, there's a lot more of like a paternal like I'm seeing you through something that, yeah. um, that that has kind of come through with the role mm-hmm. because how could it not right, right like yeah. because like that's my relationship with Andrew and also like. That's my. It's just it's just how it yeah. happens, and yeah. also it's what the Evan. It's very organic. Yeah, and it's just, what yeah. Evan needs, right? Mm-hmm. Each Evan needs something different from Connor uh, mm-hmm. when they see him, and. Um, what a fascinating yeah. perspective you've had on. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. I never even. It's about and it, I'm telling yeah. you, it's been different for everyone. But right. Andrew is definitely the one who's like needed the most. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but Taylor was one who needed like. To be like addressed directly, <laughs> because, right. you know what I mean. There, there's a yeah. lot. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. Uh, which is why this part's cool, and yeah. why I don't think I got bored of it in two years. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. it's also a, the the thing that's unique about live theater is that that's it. It, these it's a constantly sort of pulsating thing. Mm-hmm. It's always going to be different. The rhythms will yeah. always be different. Well, well, Alex, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure you. to chat with you. Congratulations on your thank um, you. incredible run thank in you. this show, and we really look forward to everything that you're going to be doing next. Thanks. So. Me, me too. We'll find out what it is together. We'll we'll, we'll keep up. We'll stay in touch. And yeah, yeah you, you come back and join us anytime here. Thank yeah. you. Fabulous. Again thank so you so. Much. Much. Uh, absolutely. Caitlin, would you please take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at five every single weekday here on Facebook. And you can listen to us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at five and hitting that subscribe button. Have a great weekend and we'll see you on Monday.